Hello there, my name is Rodrigo Muñoz, and I'm a professional musician that specializes in Afro-Cuban music. Many times, fellow musicians have called me in a panic to ask me about the clave. They want to know if a certain melody or rhythmic pattern that they are working on fits the clave or not. My initial response is the following. Don't worry so much about it. Most melodies or rhythmic patterns will fit either of the claves, and most of the time you will be required to either do no adjustments or very little adjustments. Now, I could stand here and go into intricate details about what melodies uh, fit better in a certain clave, but the truth is that even me and other people like me who have been working, writing, arranging, and playing Afro-Cuban music most of our lives don't agree 100% on the subject. But I'm not going to leave you hanging. So what I'm going to do is give you two musical examples that I think you will find very useful the next time you sit down and try your hand at writing or arranging Afro-Cuban music. But I figured that instead of giving you numerous examples of melodies and patterns that do work, I will give you instead these two examples that don't, or at least don't work very well. Number one, having a strong and important melodic note on beat three of a 3-2 clave pattern, unless the note in question is a short passing note. One, two. The one, two, three, four. La, 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 la. Number two, having a strong and important melodic note on the end of beat three of a two, three clave pattern, unless the note in question is a short passing note. One, two. One, two, three, four. Ah, ah, la, la. If you stay away from these two specific examples when writing Afro Cuban music, you will be all right for the most part. The other thing that colleagues ask me regarding writing and arranging for Afro-Cuban music is the different terms that are used either to describe plain patterns or grooves. For example, they ask me what a montuno is or what a mambo is or how do I write a drum chart for an Afro-Cuban percussion section. At this point, I'd like to warn you that we'll be assuming that we are writing for professionals or at least musicians who are well-versed in the genre. This is important to know at the time of arranging or writing an Afro-Cuban chart. What I mean is that when I'm writing for the percussion section, for instance, I will simply point out or indicate at the top of the stave the groove that should be played at a certain point in the chart. As an example, I'll simply say, play two, three song, or play bembe, or play a caballo. And I will not write out the groove. This is the same as in a traditional swing chart, where I will only indicate to play swing, and I will not write out the swing groove in the drum chart. An Afro-Cuban percussion section is usually formed by the following three main instruments. The conga, the timbales, and the bongo. The drum set is also used frequently. I'd like to point out that my preference is to always, always include a conga player. And I mean a conga player, and not simply someone who happens to be the proud owner of such an instrument. But 
I digress. When writing for such a section, I usually use only one five-line stave, and I use, I use slashes to indicate the groove which everybody in the section plays. If the timbales player or the drummer has some apoyos or hits, then you write those on top of the slashes with regular note heads like this. If you want the entire section to play a certain rhythmical figure, something that is done a lot in Latin music, then you write those on the B line or middle line using rhythm slashes like this. The percussion section is of utmost importance in Afro-Cuban music, and you have to write a chart for it because you want to use them a lot more than just for simply keeping time. Many times the entire rhythm section will play a written out figure for two, four, and sometimes more measures. So I want to discourage you from just giving the percussion section a bass part or a, a first trumpet part to save time, as sometimes some arrangers do. Now I'm going to talk about the different sections that usually show up in Afro-Cuban charts. We almost always start with an intro section, which is followed by an A section, followed by, you guessed it, a B section. Then we'll usually have, but not always, a pre-montuno, which is an instrumental bit before the montuno section. The montuno section is usually where you have the singers doing the coro y pregón, which is a four or eight or even a 60 measure repeated segment where the singers have a call and response element, the response being almost always improvised. Montunos are also used in Latin or Afro-Cuban jazz tunes to do descargas or solos. After the solos, we usually have a mambo, sometimes also referred to as a monia, which is usually a section written for the horns that lasts anywhere from four to eight or even 16 measures, repeated once or more times. By the way, the mambos are usually layered to great musical effect. Then after the mambo, we usually go back to another montuno section for more solos or singing. And finally, we wrap it up with an outro or an ending section or coda or whatever you want to call it. Now in traditional swing jazz, the piano or guitar either plays comping or plays uh, what's written on the chart. In Afro-Cuban music, the same, the piano or guitar will also be asked to play either comping or what's written, but also to play a tumbao, sometimes also called wajeo, which is a way of playing chords in an ostinato type of way. The tumbao or wajeo is very typical of Afro-Cuban music, and it is one of the most recognizable musical cells that you will hear. The bass also will either play a bass tumbao or what's written, an obligato. The bass player's tumbao will also have to match the percussion section's diversity of grooves, so he or she has to be well acquainted with the different names and styles of Afro-Cuban rhythms. I hope this brief lesson helps you in the future when you are called upon to write an Afro-Cuban chart. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Ciao. Mm-hmm. <laughs>